Uh, I was just going over diagrams. And I just finished this and posted the diagram to Facebook, you know, sort of, sort of, so it's kind of here. Uh, okay, so this is a diagram. This is the Isle of Angels, or, you know, what my sort of ideal Isle of Angels would be. It's 60 radio miles. Kind of weird, but it's 60 radio miles. A little jagged around the edge sort of representation, but not uh, completely, like, accurate. So there's um, Oceanic Agency beyond the Heaven's Peak, which is a very uh, elevated region of the island, also where the University of the Island Angels is located. So this is beneath the, the surface. It's a study center, and then about this area of the arc, outside of the circle, is like a plastic sort of, or glass area that opens into the sea. Uh, so you can see beyond. And then also a portal for, for uh, you know, like, uh, sea vehicles to exit. So it's basically like, um, I don't, I don't know, for the lack of a better term, like a, a, a bay sort of like area where there's, uh, ocean traveling vehicles. So that area is flooded, you know, sealed, flooded. The, the, an area, uh, what would that be called? Like a, a sealed door opens, no longer sealed because the area is flooded, opens and then like hyd hydraulically maybe, and then, uh, you know, those vehicles exit. That area remains flooded until the vehicle returns, and then when the vehicle returns, it's a, you know, like a little while until that area is sort of, uh, um, deflooded. So the waters return to the ocean kind of thing. <clears throat> Fuels and stuff like that, it's not super, super duper difficult. I was like, they could probably do it with electricity or some sort of nuclear power. <clears throat> not sure completely, but anyway, like the vehicles are, you know, go into the ocean from there. And I like this area because there's less disturbance. Uh, weather patterns come across the island this way. So once hit, once that hits Heaven's Peak, beyond is a lot less turbulent. I think, and then uh, the CTPA is the Continent uh, Transportation Protection Agency, and that's basically this side of the island because the continents, you know, are somewhere over here. <clears throat> it's like out in the Pacific somewhere. So continents are this way, you know, that's on that side, and then you have Hope Lake, the lowest point uh, on the island. I would say that would be somewhere over here, but it's not. Heaven's Peak is the highest. This happens to be the lowest here, uh, where water collects. So it sort of drains off this way for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, okay, so for the left is the Center for Space Exploration. This is our space exploration place. It is also connected to one of the supply chain nodes, I call it. It's a structure. <laughs> they are all uh, hemispherical structures, kind of like the Ancy Colony of the Moon. In uh, my mind, sort of the same construct. They use the same basic building patterns which are orb-like, but like hemispherical. Yeah, sphere, hemisphere. Oh yeah, <clears throat> so you know, the, the surface being the base of the hemisphere. The EPS is the Environmental Protection System. That's basically location of sort of like a department that is uh, charged with you know, trying to study and manipulate the weather. It's protect the people of the planet sort of thing and that's kind of where that happens the EPS so this isn't completely done uh, the yellow areas I didn't know what to call these they're not quadrants uh, that would be sort of square based on the Cartesian system uh, so it's not quadrant this is like a to a circular what would this be called it's like a, reminds me of like a ray kind of this area, but I don't know what to call this. It's, uh, you know, basically an area. And these are residential zones. Each one has a slightly different purpose. It's 60 radial miles, so you go, okay, there are approximately eight of these, 60 divided by eight kind of thing, but then there's, you know, some that is uh, not for residential zones. And then also I haven't added a transportation system, the tram, slow-moving electromagnetic tram system. I had an idea to uh, helix that somewhat, but it's not really, we're not really going to need altitude with that idea. It's basically, or it's, yeah, two different altitudes. Not like a helix, but more like a, I don't know yet. I was thinking spiral. 
but in the same sense, uh, meeting points, points of the spiral that are meeting points, and where, you know, it would be an optimal, like, platform for transportation, and I was like, hmm. Like, it has to be between maybe the supply chains, but even then, like, it has to be slow. A sort of slow relation, which is, like, uh, only two, though. One outward and one inward, which doesn't make any sense. The opposite direction. It reminds me of, like, like uh, um, train. Uh, train travel. Uh, Amtrak from California to New Mexico. There's only... Uh, one train that comes through like every certain amount of hours in each direction. Once a day. And, like this kind of weird though. It's, it's, to me that's weird. Like the same direction there or back. And if there's any type of emergency or necessary like need for you know a person to be in any location, it would be from Heaven's Peak to one of these locations. Either southeast, I mean southwest, you know, south southwest. And then uh, the CTPA. There are always people here. Weapons are prohibited. This sort of mind control technique, which is really weird. But anyway. <clears throat> I think that's the CTPA. They're all right there. They're the, you know, battle system. Sort of. Not really a battle, though. Like, you know. <laughs> this idea is that explosives were sent beyond the solar system. <laughs> kind of like my idea that I'm going to, you know, head toward Pluto because I don't want to be around people. <laughs> cracks me up. My gosh, it keeps me calm though. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 60 radial miles. So we have uh, point of origin 15, 45, 60. No. 15, 30, 60. 15, 30, 60. If that makes any sense. 15, 30, 60. Actually? Hmm. I have an idea. 15, let's see, we go 15, 30, 45, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, like a zigzag pattern, 5, 60 divided by 5, like that's not possible technically, it's like a fraction, like an endless fraction, but anyway, there's 5 notes, haven't figured that out. Yet, yeah. these two, uh, let's see, it would be 15, 30, 60. This one would be, would be between 15 and 30. And this one would be between 30 and 60, like 45. 45 and this one, I'm not sure. It's some fraction. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Larger structures towards the outside, meaning they tra travel there less often. Smaller structures toward the center travel there more often because the area is further away. Uh, of course, you know, like uh, saving um, power or not using what's not needed, kind of thing. And like further toward the ocean, uh, supplies are needed less often. Um, types of supplies are differing, so depending on which one of these areas you reside in. You have different purpose, different supply chain, different uh, ideal. So I might change these uh, into like more concentric type representations. So that there's like a residential arc sort of relations. I'm not completely sure though. Anyway, okay, so Heaven's Peak. That's where all the instructors are sort of from. Um, the foothills, at the foothills, is where uh, Astrophil's parents live, somewhere along here. There's a path that leads up, and she hasn't ever visited there, but uh, her instructor, Gala, sort of watches her, you know, wherever she goes. Anyway, there's a, <clears throat> there's also a uh, space mission training camp, which is kind of part of the CSE. Um, also goes into the ocean-type area, which is there's two underwater sort of ideals, and that's basically turbulence here, or you know the oceanic agency turbulence there, or less turbulence there, and then um, a pool, uh, underwater pool system at the actual center itself. So I kind of kind of thought that into existence or not existence, but into a piece of type charting. 
So that's uh, the diagram of uh, Isle, of the Isle of Angels thus far. Everything's centralized about the you know central supply area. I like tools and, and ideas and stuff like that. That and Heaven's Peak. Heaven's Peak is the university and that's where all knowledge come from, c comes from. So this is orb-like. Hemispherical, um, but spherical. So hemisphere above ground, you know, and below ground, lower hemisphere. Two different hemispheres, central. <clears throat> Everything else is surface-based. And then uh, Heaven's Peak is, uh, you know, up on a hill. Everything else is relatively flat, with the exception of Hope Lake, lowest point. And that's just a circle representation. A lot of this isn't even circular. <sighs> Mathematically... Kind of consistent. So yeah, the story up and uh, have have an entire idea to add. I'm not sure what I want to actually like type on. I'm like now that I have a more visual representation of it, I think it makes more sense. Feel time, time. Three hundred years after the island, uh, three hundred years after an island surrounded the place they knew is why it took form. Their survivors began building a city, preparing for the survival of mankind. That is the Isle of Angels. Space exploration. Many people on this cluttered planet have dreamed about living on the Isle of Angels. The continents are rarely visited by residents, and continent continental is rarely visit. <laughs> the Isle of Angels was developed on 60 radial miles of flatland. So we wouldn't say flatland, because um, Heaven's Peak isn't quite flat. So we'll say islands, maybe? And overseen by education at the highest point on, on the island, and the location of the University of the Isle of Angels, that is Heaven's Peak. U O I A. Anyway, we'll call this northeasterly elevated region. Northeasterly elevated region, Heaven's Peak. This was deciduous, uh, kind of changed to coniferous for some reason. I was thinking freaking uh, volc volcanic. And stuff cones. And I, I think I like deciduous. And I don't like the idea of cones or, or pine. You know, the sense of pine stickiness. I'm like, mm. okay. So that covers Heaven's Peak, and then and the further uh, toward the ocean you get uh, is you know less dense. Uh, smooth shores. I don't like the idea of smooth shores. I'm like rocky. Shores. Heaven's Peak uh, lived several descendants of Astro Aero and Eagle affiliated people of the 21st century. So that's U O I A. They built their entire society about. So it sh should go bio too, right? Aero, bio, and eco affiliated people of the 21st century. So Astro, I think I got some of that covered. Aero, not quite. Like, uh, I'm not sure about those. Um. The first thing that came to mind was uh, Air Force, and I don't know how much, how far I want to go into that um, idea. Bio, of course, you know, biology and stuff like that. That's many different fields and specialty, specialty knowledges and sub-specialties, and then eco. Okay, so that's 21st century. You know, we're in the 21st century. Diagonally and southeasterly. Bam. Near the coast, so south southeasterly. So south southeasterly. Nearest the coast is the center for space exploration. Hmm, actually, oh shit, that's underground though. And crews in the supervision of modern space explorers. So. Once they've learned, they go off to one of these, usually. Or, you know, they stay home and sort of do their gardening. And take care of family, you know. Or elders, and stuff like that. The foothills of Heaven's Peak is a residential district. This area here, my parents live closest to the foothills, nearest. The main trail leading to the university, which is somewhere around here. It's not very far. 
<clears throat> All education is facilitated by instructors of this UOIA. About 26 years ago, during 2982, I was born in Astrofall of the Isle of Angels. She was born here. From child to teenager, I am seeking answers to space. My way out this ever catastrophic and dreadful rock. So you go, how the heck does she know? You know? <clears throat> 26 years ago, I was born. Hmm. Maybe history. It's like a curiosity the universe begged me to learn and learn I did. Everyone knew my path before I began to tread it. Space explorer extraordinary. Extraordinary. Anyway, so my parents began preparing me for education at three years of age with shapes. They did that at home. Something I want to further in that idea is uh let's see, like home life. So you go, okay. This is kind of like so an overall description of the entire island. And then also home life. So it's like more, okay, so we go visual, uh, continuing, continuance, and then uh, also home life. What is family life like? And then we get more personal with the main character, one of the main characters, and then for them into, you know. <clears throat> Neo family history. Astrophel, they're after. Like, I could change this slightly. This is kind of what her home life is like. But then there's, like, family history. Maybe she, she, she gets to know herself. Kind of like, um, let's see. So we could go in her point of view. Uh, Astrophel, Astrophel's point of view of, uh, what is that called? Uh, that's where you recognize yourself as a, like a being, a human, um, your identity. Uh, identity recognition. And then, that, that's only like a page, I'm like, eh. Okay, so then there's her point of view, kind of father, telling her of space exploration, that's when stuff changed for her, and then uh, I yearned for a chance to explore space, but my emergency was limiting. That's a little different. When I began my higher educational endeavors at 19 years of age, eight years had passed since the first moon colonists were transported, and my interests had not been forgotten. So she goes further, my story of influence, space exploration, someone she met, maybe, or didn't meet, I don't know. Anyway, State of the Eternity Program, elaborate on influential and fictional space figures. Three. I'm like, I don't know if I want to go there. Identity recognition is probably only one. These are like several. I'm like, yeah, I do not need that many pages. Anyway, I'm just gonna go with it. Let's project it anyway. Um, okay, so let's see. S influential space figures, and then she goes, six years into my expanded education, she goes, expanded? <laughs> That's not the eternity program's head of personnel. Proceed on a shuttle. No. Uh, no seat was available for an intern. I didn't understand. That was a quintessential overachiever. I thought they would let me go right then. The space exploration founders had no place for a student without space experience. As a student of botanical analysis, I was rare. With a bachelor's degree in botanical analysis and a minor degree of study in space exploration, I thought I was ready. My <laughs> instructor denied my relocation, implying that no one is ever completely ready for space exploration. Remember that, child. Countless failed attempts at gaining a position on the Eternity Space Station left me discouraged when I came across a flyer. It's like a flyer. Something like that. Anyway, they mean competitive space simulation training to a to a competitive space simulation training facility. She goes, uh, let's see. Actually, there could be more on this. Like, um, the flyer detailed, um, credential for, uh, Educational requirement. Looks like that. Educational degree requirement. Just learning instruments. Anyway, I gained the simulated experience I needed. My training was the missing piece. And then she goes, 
They're like, off with you. No. Obtaining residential status of the anti colony of the moon have become possible upon completion of requirements for a master's degree. I think I got that wrong. Is it master's, bachelor's, bachelor's, master's? No, it's bachelor's, master's. Anyway, it was botanical analysis and minor study in exploration. Not piloting law. Just sorry. Following completion of my educational goals, I'm like, yeah, they probably do. Every last one of them. Anyway. Following completion of my educational goals and on my way to parents' residence, I received a voicemail from the head of personnel of the eternity program. From the last one, she's like, I'll learn. And if not, I will not survive. Anyway. The interior of the tram vehicle swirled around me as her voice was uh, emitted through my headset, describing an opening for a position upon her eternity. Swirling. Swirled. I'm like, what? Twirled? I wasn't twirled. I was going to use twirled, but then it reminded me of a friend. <sighs> Description uh, most closely matched my educational achievements. He informed me of a request made by a moon colonist by the name of Serene, Celine Sullivan. So, by the name of Celine... i got to change your last name. I don't like Sullivan. Celine something. I'd read a few reports submitted by her to the University Space Science Department. Space Science Department. Uh... An assignment entailed the examination of a few of her reports and a research paper, including resolution of an issue she had experienced upon eternity. <clears throat> so I kind of want to go into go into that at a later time, but not quite yet. I gathered several sources on Celine, the eternity references uh, from bioscience and horticulture. After examining the report, can it can it be possible? And I'll elaborate on the report and research from perspective of Celine. Like whatever. Anyway, meeting parents, friends, you know, the briefing, the bye bye the, you know, her point of view, every earth departing materials expected to do well on the moon, and use of lean. And so the mission tower had to depart from the dawn, so there's every tree, every aisle, every home. Right. On the aisle, every home. She's like obsidian and transport vehicle is attached to a few massive rockets and that tower. This night, she gleams light with spotlights. So, <clears throat> there's also going to be another relation. I think that's going to be another dot somewhere like right here. But then it's really close to the supply location. So, I think it's going to be another dot here. And it's kind of like a, a, um, I don't know. I don't really like that much. Yeah, maybe up front here somewhere. But how would they do that? It has to be like a, a location that's offset. That would not disturb like other areas especially with the you know, like the wind turbulence created by burning fuel just saying very hot too <laughs> shifting rocky out in the sea like now um this entire supply chain route maybe or this one. This one, maybe. Removal. Then again, there's like a lot of a lot of weather this way. So where would you go with that? And over here, there's not very much disturbance. So, hmm. Hope Lake. I'm like, hmm. There might be an issue there. She's like, it's off of a roof. Can't do that. <laughs> Case in the entire building. I'm like, gah, why? Anyway, I'll figure that out. <laughs> what I want to do with that. And the miles surrounding that. Anyway, like two maybe. Maybe less. <sighs> okay, so I like that idea. Um, let's save this. Doot. Expand on some of those tomorrow maybe. Like, thank you for listening and watching, and I will do this again. I'm like, oh, I was not recording. I was recording. Start, start recording. I'm like, it already is. What